Right to a channel of light fluid. Distant Travels. Channel of Light Lewid presents Mike Steele in The Endless White. And yes, we are going on a journey into space in this new to the channel VN. As you see, for its point seven, it's been out for a while, and some of you may have caught it on FEN Shin's channel, multi voiced. Unfortunately, this one will just be me doing this, but it is a very interesting VN. I've read it through the pretty much everything they have so far, so I hope you are going to enjoy this one, and let's get to it. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonour others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Great quote, you've never been religious as such, why are you remembering this right now? Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Love, you're dreaming. It's a good one this time. I sow and water the seeds of love, just as I care for my feelings of you. As they blossom, I pray that we shall both reap the benefits of everlasting happiness. You don't recognize the quote, but the deep voice is comforting and relaxing. You close your eyes as you take in the pleasant, yet masculine smell of the person embracing you. It's a soft embrace, full of care. There's nowhere else you'd rather be right now. The next thing you notice is how warm you suddenly feel. Your cheeks are blushing, and just as you're about to open your eyes, you feel his soft lips against yours. His beard tickles your face, his warm body enveloping you like a blanket in the cold of winter. Time to wake up. You wake up suddenly. You fall from your bed. This is not the way you'd imagined your day starting off. The dream was just getting good. Uh... You gently rub your shoulder, feeling the pain starting to subside. Looking at your phone, there's still an hour until your alarm is supposed to ring. Still, somehow you feel rested enough to start your day. Oh, must be the nice dream. Seems I'm ready up. I might as well make some breakfast. You have some extra time this morning. Usually you just grab a power bar and be on your way. However, today you decide to go for something more filling. What's your drink of choice? After filling breakfast with some incredibly well-made eggs, three slices of bacon and a cup of tea, you clean up and get rest for the day. The morning chill hits you as soon as you step out of the door, and as you lock the door behind you, you notice it's still snowing. You figure the snowfall would have slowed down since yesterday. However, a large snowflake still falls slowly. It's almost entrancing, beautiful in its own way softly creating an empty white blanket over the street, as if putting the world to rest. Yeah, looks like winter is here to stay. You pull your coat on just a little bit tighter. 
Remembering the dream you had this morning, you almost regret getting out of bed as you start walking towards your office. The walk is long, but remembering how delayed all the buses usually are at this time of year. I'm glad I got up early. The bright white feel of the snow is relaxing contrast to the usual darkness of the fall season. Somehow, it reminds you of how lonely you've been feeling lately. However, rather than make you sad, the somberness of it all helps you focus on all the friends you've made these last few months. While they may not be the closest of friends, the acquaintances you've made treat you well. With all that has happened the last year, you've come to really appreciate them. The walk is pleasant, but with your headphones you focus on the music. Before you know it, you arrive at your office. You step inside and brush the snow off your coat. As you arrive, you're greeted by the smell of freshly brewed coffee. Your boss is already there. She greets you as you walk through the door. Good morning. You take a seat at your desk, not too far from where Julia's desk is. The office you work in is a smaller branch of a larger tech firm. You deal mostly with VIP and higher paying customers. While the incoming volume of tickets might not be very high, they tend to be quite complicated. Some of the tasks are definitely above your pay grade, but the team is great. You've come to appreciate your colleagues and the atmosphere of the group. Despite the problems that rise from the pressure of the complicated workload, you feel valued. Good morning, Julia. How are you doing? I'm great. How about you? Oh, did you check your email this morning? Uh, not yet. Let me just get things set up. You hook up your laptop to your workstation and get set to work on getting anything started. You've run a number of diagnostics over the weekend. Seems you have your morning work cut out for you, deciphering the reports. You hear the door open and look over, just in time to see your colleague Ed walk in. He's one of the people from your office you've gotten close to, likely due to the fact that you two work so closely together, as most of your other colleagues have other tasks to handle. Good morning. Yeah, sorry I'm late. Traffic's all messed up with the snow. I swear this happens every year. Good morning, Ed. How was your weekend? I hate to say it, I pretty much slept through all of it. After the leaves won the game on Friday, I went to, out to an after party. After that, I didn't really make it out of bed until Sunday. Getting too old for partying already? Ed is younger than you by a few years. He just turned 22 a few weeks ago. Julia even made a cake for him. Good morning, Ed. Did you get the chance to check your email this morning? I did, while on the bus. You're talking about this super secret ish recruitment email, right? Sharp as ever. Any idea who you recommend yet? The idea sounds interesting. I'm not sure I'd be cut out for it. I have an idea about who I could pick to represent Team Jules Rules, but for now you just have to wait and see. Team Jules rules? What did I miss? You decide to check her email message to see what it's all about. You open your inbox and start working your way through all the irrelevant information that inevitably ends up coming your way. With the large amount of messages you get every day, it's no wonder you didn't notice the one they were talking about. You do, however, eventually find the email. Seems to be a standard recruitment message from the internal operations position. However, it doesn't say what the job actually is. You've never seen anything like it. The deadline seems to be at the end of this week as well. Hey, Julia. What's the actual job that the email is about? I can't tell you much, honestly. I haven't been given much more information than what's in the email. It's some kind of internal recruitment that all major tech companies have been asked to do. She has a look on her face that conveys deep thought. We're supposed to recommend one or two of our best for a super secret job. Supposedly it's something that will require a long absence and the pay is supposed to be really good. 
The voice carries excitement at this point. I'm supposed to pick someone who's interested and send their resume in to get a recommendation to the government. What about it? You interested in representing Team Jules Rules? She smiles at you and seems excited at the prospect of being able to help her employees further their careers. I'll think about it and let you know by tomorrow. Thanks, Julia. You realise you haven't updated your resume in years. Last time was probably at your previous job, before Julia headhunted you to your current job. Before... I have a good idea to update my resume tonight. Who knows? This job out in you might be interesting. I get the chance to hear more about it. Uh, thanks, Julia. I'll think about it. You should apply. Alright, time for work. With that, Julia turns towards her desk and you begin to focus on your own work. You finish sorting through the rest of your emails. It's mostly automated emails from company partners, planned maintenance on their equipment or small outages during the weekend. Work quickly distracts you. Before long you finish more than a few phone calls and resolve most of your assigned tickets. As you finish backing up a database from your clients, your mind drifts. You stare out the window to rest your eyes for a bit. Wish I could have slept in today. First snow just made my bed feel so much warmer. In that dream. Ah. Ed's voice wakes you from your daydream. Why don't well, I grab lunch together? I didn't pack one today. That ah, sounds good. I want to see if anyone else wants to tag along. You look over and notice that Julia has already gone. Ah, she's probably in a meeting or took an early lunch break. Julia already left. Let's see what Nick and Dave are doing then. Think they'll be able to pick where to go this time. Nah. The two of you start making your way over to the part of the office where their team works. You let out a small yawn as you walk down the hallway with Ed. Waking up an hour early is your internal clock running a bit off time. You could definitely use some food and maybe even some tea. Yeah, being up playing TFT all night. You let out a short chuckle. <laughs> you know me too well, but no, not this time. I had a slow weekend, working on my CCNA certifications. Woke up before my alarm. I thought you already had your certs. You definitely have all the skills already. Even though you know he's right, you can't help but feel that Ed definitely thinks too highly of you. Thanks for compliment, Ed. I never ended up finishing the actual exams last year. You side against opening up about how your ex had pushed you away from it, telling you it wasn't a good career path. Instead, you look on the other side of it all. In the words of your friend Nick, you had dodged a fucking bullet. The two of you make your way over to the other side of your small office. Dave is texting on his phone and Nick seems fully absorbed by whatever is on his computer screen. None of them notice the two of you enter the room. Once you round Nick's desk, you notice he's playing a game. That's just like Nick. Working hard or hardly working? Ah, the latest Team for Territory update launched already? I think it wasn't until next week. Nick smiles but doesn't look away from his game when he greets you. Aye, I want to grab lunch together. We had the same idea. Ah, I was thinking of getting a burger from Boisterous Burgers down the street. Ah, perhaps we could head to the buffet to Euphoria. I'll go wherever you guys decide. And how about sushi or wasabi? Nick eventually looks away from the computer screen, seemingly finished with his game. I'll find whatever you pick, as long as you decide on something this time. You remember last Friday. It took them well over half your lunch break to decide where to actually go. None of your suggestions would stick. They're definitely a bunch of picky eaters. Uh, sushi or the buffet then? 
Neither works for me. Looks like they left it for me to decide. Again. You can't look but smile as you look at your friends. They never change. Let's go to the buffet. I'm starving. Your stomach growls. Time perfectly as you finish your sentence. Nobody disagrees. As you're about to leave, you meet Julia in the hallway. Ah, I was looking for you. You know your lunch technique doesn't start for another ten minutes. Julia has a fake frown on her face. It lasts the entirety of four seconds while she bursts out laughing. When she catches her breath, she points towards you, Ed, and Nick in each in order. You three, do you please fill out these forms and bring them back after lunch? She hands you each a form consisting of three pages. Thank you. Oh, by the way, where are you guys going for lunch? A full meal of euphoria. The all you can eat buffets the goal. Sounds good. You guys have fun. Julia walks off towards the meeting room while checking through what you assume to be meeting notes on her phone. Remember to fill out the forms. Bye! Nick and Dave start discussing the latest TFT updates as you walk towards the restaurant. You and Ed trail behind. I guess this means we now know who Julia's thinking of recommending. Are you going to do it? Nah, there's no way I'd be good enough. You should apply though. You and Nick both stand way better chances. Besides, you both deserve it more. I don't agree at all. Confidence is a weird thing. Ed should have tons of it, but he doesn't. I haven't really worked out the details, but... I'll probably start in school again next year. Your initial reaction is to disagree with Ed. He should apply. But you're happy he's heading back to school. He's one of the hardest working people you know. He's the opposite of lazy. He'll go far if he gets the chance. Well, I think you should apply, Ed. You might not be the tech wiz you think you need to be, but you're the hardest working person out of everyone here. You really do mean it. Ed has been a pillar of support for those days when the workload was overbearing. Yeah, I'll think about it. Thank you for the encouragement. You should apply. I can't think of someone who would fit better than you. I'm considering it, though I'd like to find out more about it first. You have the feeling with all the smoke and mirrors around the entire thing, there's no way you'll find out more without actually applying. Two of you continue talking about work-related subjects as you make your way to the restaurant. The restaurant is bristling with people. You struggle to find a free table, but Dave manages to snag one for you just as another group is leaving. I either made a great choice or a terrible one. It depends on the line to actual buffet. How about I go pay for all of us and you guys can just crap your food? I'll come with you. I'll grab plates or two of you. I think I have an idea about what you prefer. You and Nick can make your way to the line for the register. Looks like you're going to have to finish eating quickly, or ask for a box to bring your food with you. You'll be here for a while. I wanted to ask since I saw the email. Are you going to apply for this super secret job? I'm thinking about it. It's all a little sketchy so far. Well, I'm the same. I'm curious, but I don't want to jump headfirst into the dark because I know what awaits me on this side. It's you. I'm sure you could handle what they throw at you. Nick gives you a gentle smile. Nick is not one to give up easily. He's stubborn, in a good way. Well, thanks. You shouldn't sell yourself short either. Before you know it, the line is all but dispersed and you arrive at the register. 
Nick pays for everyone, you return to the table where Dave has set up a plate each of the two of you. Once you finish your meal, you take a look at the form Julia gave you earlier. With Dave looking over your shoulder, you start filling everything out. You give it a once over and notice mostly standard questions. Age, previous work experience, gender... Seems to finish up with a short personality test. I better just finish it now or I'll leave it for later. of Team Jules Rules. This is a Jules Verne reference. Nothing to do with white tigers. The next few questions are fairly standard. You barely pay attention as you fill them out. Until... Sexual preference. Doesn't seem like a normal question for a job application. That's a sexual harassment lawsuit waiting to happen. You gonna answer that one? I should, shouldn't I? Worst case scenario, if I apply it, something I'll find out later. And then I wouldn't just be a liar, I'd be a coward as well. You're not a coward. You can't help but smile as Dave encourages you. He just cares about people. You're fairly certain he doesn't even care about the meaning of what he just said. Sometimes it feels like the expression, wouldn't hurt a fly, was written specifically to describe him. Thanks, Dave. You write down your answer on the form and continue with the rest of the questions. They're fairly straightforward, and even the personality test doesn't seem to breach any real boundaries. All then, ready to head back. Just one thing. Dave, come here, please. Dave moves over to Nick and whispers something to him. Dave whispers something back to him, then walks up to you. Hey, Axel, can we see your application real quick? Alright, what are you going to do with it? I don't worry about it, it's a good thing. As you hand over the application, Dave takes it and brings it over to Nick. It quickly takes his pen and writes something down on the second page of your application. I'll give this to Julie together with mine. Would you hand me yours then? Sure, you're going to write something on mine as well? You don't need me to. I wonder what he means by that. The conversation shifts between different topics ranging from work to how your weekend was on the walk back to the office. Dave and Ed walk ahead, discussing the latest hockey game and Ed's favourite team, the Leaves. You fall in pace with Nick, who's walking a fair bit behind the pair. He takes a deep breath and turns to you, the contemplative look on his face. Hey, Axel, you should apply for the secret job. You're way too good at what you do to be stuck here. Nick is not usually this blunt when it comes to feelings. Even though you've had more than one deep conversation with him. More often than not, he's drunk when it happens. On top of that, he's probably your closest friend. So when he tells you something honestly, it's worth considering. Your thoughts bring you back a few months in time. You wake up early, though you have no desire to get out of bed. It had been sudden and without warning. A quick breakup. You never thought it would affect you like this. It wasn't as much the breakup as much as the way it had happened. The sudden change, the sudden feeling of betrayal. Maybe I just go back to sleep. I go into hibernation, wake up sometime next year. You grab your phone and check the time. 6.37am. I should get out of bed if I want to make it to work. 
The draw of the pillow and the lure of forgetful sleep is strong. Well, you've put on a strong front the last few days. The day will not break you. You force yourself to a quick shower, comb your hair and put on a clean set of clothes. A quick power bar and you make your way out to the door. You get on your bike and start the ride to work. Some of you just feel so fucking cliche. The moment I'm alone, I struggle to hold back my tears. I always thought I was stronger than this. In retrospect, I had foolishly always put pride in the fact that I thought myself too strong to enter like this. You try to distract yourself by focusing on the bike ride to your office. There are birds chirping and there's fresh air. Traffic is light and everything is set for you to be in a good mood. Instead, all you can think of is that the sun is too bright and the air is too filled with the smell of gas from the cars passing by. You eventually arrive at the office and stay to gather your thoughts for a few seconds before entering the building. Just as you're about to enter, Nick arrives. His bus must have just arrived. Nick holds the door for you. Good morning, Nick. How are you doing? Oh, they're regular. Depressed and with a solid lack of will to get out of bed. A few weeks ago, you'd probably have laughed at his answer, affected with practice comical timing. Now, it struck you differently. You tilt your head a little and give him another look, choosing your next words carefully. Right there with you. A neutral answer that still hints at something. I can't shake the feeling of being pathetic right now. I'm supposed to be different. Or am I really? You let out a sigh, unable to suppress it. Oh, enough heavy thoughts for now. Have better things to do. Nick gives you a smile as you make your way inside. A gentleman first. Friday, later that week. That was delicious. I should have the same thing next time we're here as well. You lean back. It's been a quiet day and you have a few minutes to rest before heading back to the office. Are you going to join us for lunch next week as well, Axel? You can't say you've disliked joining them for lunch this week. They've been inviting you every day and you're liking your colleagues more and more. It's a good distraction. That sounds like fun. Got the energy to cook this week anyway. Work has been piling up. It's a lie. But for some reason I feel like I have to make an excuse to join. It's like I'm carrying out the reason I did not join them sooner. Hey, Axel. A little party at my house tonight if you want to come. Ah, it's just a few friends. You know all of us. Well, I think I'll be able to make it. You should join them. Saying no would be easy. The idea of just going to bed until next year still seems pretty good. Then again, i got no plans and nothing to lose. In worst case, I can just leave. Uh, what do I need to bring? Uh, enough alcohol for you to drink in order to pass out of my couch. I can't help but think he has some ulterior motive with that statement. But once again, what do I have to lose by going? It could be fun. Yeah, what time? Yeah, people will probably start chopping right after work. Or you could stop by the liquor store and then pick up something to eat and head to my place together if you like. Ah, sounds good. Maybe you can help me pick up what drinks to buy. I haven't really been partying lately. Okay, let's do it. Later that evening, it's almost 4am, everyone else has gone home. Yet Nick still seems intent on getting you as drunk as can be. The alcohol's had a definite effect on you. That and the feeling that you have nothing to lose loosens your filter. Oh, thanks for inviting me, Nick. I needed a break. I can imagine. You're the quiet type. His eye duly pretty much outed you last week. Did nobody tell you about that? Nick bursts out into laughter. I'm sorry, but that's hilarious. I thought it was last week when you'd gone for two days. 
basically she does it's an emergency as your boyfriend I guess it didn't cross her mind yet and told anyone yeah I guess that's how I put it when I told her somehow you suddenly struggle to hold back your tears it's like simply telling someone about the recent weeks sets you off you don't want to break down in front of anyone actually you don't want to break down at all so what happened if you don't mind me asking that is Silence falls for a minute you consider if you should tell him or not. But then again, this evening's had one solid theme that has led you to this point, drunk at Nick's house. Nothing to lose, is there? Jim called me and told me he'd been in a car crash. I took a flight to go see him as he lives a few towns away. Turns out the car crash was minor. It's fine. He wanted me to come see him so he could break up with me in person. Oh, I'm sorry. That's rough. With a pained expression on your face, you continue. If there is a moment to let it out, all out, it's now. I was fine. It hurt, but what hurt me the most was finding out he'd been dating someone else the last six months. You feel a tear falling down your cheek. But that's also it. You keep your composure. You continue telling Nick everything. How Jim had been unfaithful throughout the entire relationship. You let him know about your travels and more of your story. Well, I suppose I don't even blame him. I should have picked up on the signs, really. I really did feel like a placeholder for him. Should have trusted those feelings earlier. Fuck, I'm pathetic. You're not pathetic. You're allowed to be sad or angry or disappointed, frustrated, not feeling when something is wrong and you just can't feel it. Or any feeling. But you're not pathetic. You're hurt. Or anything, you're amazing. Don't be so hard on yourself, Axel. I broke up with Rebecca, I was a mess for probably a year. Most of the time I still am. You did not expect this response. You did not expect what followed either. You and Nick talked for over an hour. Nick telling the story of how his ex, whom he'd been together with since school, all of a sudden left him with nothing but the words, I'm not really sure about our relationship. Ouch. You could relate to what he had felt. Eventually, as it started getting brighter outside, the subject shifted. He was sobering up, but Nick was not showing any signs of sobering. You know, I had no idea you were gay. There it is. Blunt, honest. At least he doesn't hate me. Will you tell me more about yourself? I'm interested in people. Things like sexuality fascinate me, but it's not something you can just ask anyone. At the moment, I feel like I have nothing to lose. Ask away. Nick suddenly leans in towards you and kisses you passionately. He has his hands on your face, softly guiding you into the kiss. That's unexpected. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was over the line. I don't mind. Nick bursts out into laughter, and without warning, he's suddenly asleep. I must have drunk too much. You grab the blanket lay next to him on the couch and put it over him. You put a pillow under his head so he rests comfortably while discreetly grabbing your things as you leave his apartment. As you step into the quiet morning sunlight, you can't help but think. That was nice. Honest. Life needs more honesty. And what if... Over the next couple of weeks, you spend more time with Nick, Dave, and eventually Ed and Sam. Even Julia and her boyfriend hang out with the group. You open up slowly to your friends, and things are easier to handle. Nick also seems happier after your talk. He must have needed as much as you did.
I mean it. You should apply. You're too good to be stuck here, and your ex isn't going to hold you back anymore. You think for a second you might have opened up too much to Nick in the last few months. No, he definitely has my best interest in mind. I'm pretty comfortable where I am, though. I can play TFT most of the day. Besides, I don't think Eddie's going to apply. He just wants to go back to school, and Julius gave me a raise. That leaves you. Nick is also too good for his current job. That's a fact. You know, as you just said, it's easy to apply to yourself. You should apply, Nick. Nick gives you a soft smile. It looks like he's considering something deeply. Yeah, right. I'll apply. That means you also have to apply, Axel. You can't turn my own words back at me and not expect the same treatment. That's true. You make your way back to the office and Nick hands Julia the application forms. Julia walks with Ed and you back to the part of the office the three of you work. Let me know by tomorrow if you're going to apply, please. An email is fine. Put as much digging as I can. It's an amazing opportunity. Besides, we need Team Jules rules to win. Yeah, win what exactly? The honour of winning, of course. You shake your head with a smile. Always oh, the enthusiast. As you're about to take your seat, you notice something different about the room. You put up all these Halloween decorations over lunch, Julia? Must have been a short meeting. Isn't it great? Julia tends to go hard when she gets something on her mind. You wonder what Christmas will be like. You return to work and your colleagues start focusing on their own tasks while conversing with each other. The rest of the day continues as usual. Your thoughts drift to Nick in the past few months. What would changing jobs mean for you? Would you be able to keep the friendships you've built in the last few months? Loving someone again would be nice. Just like the dream this morning. Once again, is Ed that wakes you from your daydream. Are you alright? Ed had clearly tried saying something to you while he was spacing out. Ah, sorry, <laughs> just lost in the thought. Ah, okay. Are you taking the bus home today? Looking out the window, it started snowing again. I ended up only walking home in the snow today. I'll walk you to the bus stop. You look at the time and notice your shift ended a few minutes ago. It's been a weird day. I'm usually not this distracted. You grab your coat and leave the office together with Ed. The evening air is crisp and cold. The sun's already set and the feeling of winter is setting in. Are you really not going to apply for the job? Oh, I'm considering it. Most likely not. I've been thinking about going back to school for a while now. In reality, I don't really think this line of work suits me. You can't say you're not great at customer service. I just don't have the technical know-how. That's something you can learn. Personality is core here. Hmm. I'll think about it. Your bus arrives as you get to the bus stop. I see you tomorrow, Ed. Take care, Axel. Quite the day. First that dream, the news of this job. Seems to have everyone excited on edge at the same time. Things are definitely going to move, regardless if any of us get the job. It shows everyone that people are willing to move forward. It's a breath of fresh air for sure. Things have felt so still for such a long time. Even things are better now than they were a few months ago. I wonder if Nick and Ed are going to apply. It's definitely an opportunity. Are you going to apply? You promised to let Julia know. 
I should send her a message. If you don't take any chances, there's no moving forward. You send your boss a text message letting her know. Hi Jules, just to let you know I'd like to send him an application for the recruitment. A few seconds later you receive a text message from Julia. That's great, I'll send you your application first thing tomorrow. I'm so excited. Thanks Jules. Enthusiastic as always. Well, that's done. You start some music on your phone and the rest of the bus ride home is comfortable and relaxing. The rest of your evening passes by fast. You make some food and play some games on your computer. Before long you're laying in bed, ready to go to sleep. Today was fun. Hope I have another pleasant dream, like last night. You can feel the warmth on the arm around your shoulders. The pleasant feeling of a touch on your arm. I feel like I've seen you a thousand times, and every time I see you I fall in love again. You're familiar even though I do not know you yet. It's like the feeling of home. You feel the same. You can't explain it, but the familiarity is there. Still, somehow you know you're dreaming. Looking up into a sea of stars. Your worries all forgotten. No sadness, no loneliness. No sense of dread or feeling lost. No need to pursue a purpose you're unsure of. Come here. Suddenly you're definitely being hugged. You can't see by who or how, but the feeling is there. Warmth, safety. Again? Got to... Ah. You're up an hour early again. Might as well get up and get ready for the day. You check your phone for the text message you just received. Good morning, Axel. I hope I didn't wake you up too early. I sent your application last night and got an answer this morning. Interesting. They want you for an interview. They want to fly you to Broadtown today, at lunch even. Oh, I'm so excited. You don't need to come in this morning if you don't have the time. Pack your things. I'm already booking a hotel for you. Thanks, Julia. I'll be in as soon as I'm packed. Team Joel's Rules is going to win. You can't help but smile. This is getting interesting. I do have an extra hour. Ah, might as well start packing. You finish packing for the trip. Enough clothes to last you for a few days, even though you should only be gone for one night. Better safe than sorry. This is going to be an interesting day. You make yourself breakfast and get ready for your day. A full breakfast again, not just a granola bar. The bus should be at the stop, just outside, in a few minutes. You let a yawn escape as you take a seat on the bus. I need to get my sleep schedule on track. Working up an hour early every day isn't doing me any favours in that department. You're the first to arrive at the office today. What if Julia is here? You must have been earlier than you thought. You hear someone enter the room. It's Julia. Oh, good morning, Axel. Congratulations on making the interview. I'm so excited. I booked the taxi for you and Nicola. I was on my way here. She'll be here just before lunchtime to take you two to the airport. Oh, Nick also made the interview? That's great. You can't help but feel excited. The chances are the one you land in this job. Starting to feel realistic. Team Jules Rules, how's it going? She seems excited as ever as she walks away, gesturing and laughing. 
The day goes fast. Everyone's excited for you and Nick. The news has spread fast. Before you know it, the taxi is outside and you're getting ready to leave. Dave, Ed and Julia all wish you good luck as you leave. Now they act all excited. Almost feels like we've already gotten the job. Oh, like we're going on an epic adventure to deliver the One Ring to Mount Doom. With some luck, it'll be both. The way everyone's been acting has definitely increased your excitement. You're excited to see what happens and where this takes you. At the very least, you'll get to know more about this super secret job. It's been a while since you felt like this kind of excitement over something. It's a good feeling. You somehow keep your hopes in check. Nothing worse than getting excited, just be let down. The taller the hopes, the longer the fall. The car ride proceeds in silence. Before long, you arrive at the airport. The airport is quiet and there's not a lot of people around. You find a seat in a secluded area where you can wait for the plane in peace. Yeah, Axel speaking. Hi. Hi, Julia. We got for 20 minutes to your calling already. I can't help it. I'm so excited. I really called to let you know I sent you an email with all the stuff needed for the hotel. Oh, I'm so glad about that. Oh, thanks, Julia. You're the best. Make sure Team's Jules Rules wins now. What am I saying? Of course we'll win. You hear the starting call for the boarding of your flight. I looks like we're boarding. I'll text you from Broadtown. Bye. Have a nice flight. Before long, you've taken your seat in the plane and you're on your way to Broadtown. Nick takes his seat next to you. It's been a while since I've been on a plane. Just doubles how nervous I'm feeling. He does look a little stressed. I don't really like him. You okay? Yeah, I'm alright. Probably try to sleep a bit as soon as we're in the air. And that seems like a good idea. Maybe I'll try to get some sleep on the plane. You close your eyes. We hope you have a pleasant flight with us at Fast Air Airways. Enjoy your stay in Broadtown. Perhaps I slept through the entire flight. I must have really needed the rest. You've been waking up an hour earlier than usual the last few days, and there's been more excitement than you're used to. Plus, you've been having a lot of dreams recently. Not that they were bad ones. Nicolette's had a groan as he stands up. Oh, let's get going. Did you give you any information about where we're going? Oh, she sent me an email. Uh, could you grab my bag? I'll check what she wrote meanwhile. As you take your phone out of flight mode, you get an email notification. Julia really went out, all out on this one. You said you need the trip. The hotel has got a little home. It's located on Broadwalk 17. You can check in with the code M4NB0B44TWIN. Here aboard, there's a movie theater nearby and there's a park near the hotel. Oh, I got a message that said someone will pick you up at the airport. Maybe you're the one who want to be your new boss. Thanks, Jules. I'm in Broadtown now. New boss? She's getting way ahead of everything. I'm probably not even getting the job. Interesting. We're being picked up at the airport. They'll have a sign at the gate. Really? Yeah, because that's even more high profile than I'd imagined. Nick hands you your bag and starts walking, a little faster than usual. I guess he's excited. You make way out of the plane and the meet-up point. You and Nick barely have to wait a minute before you notice someone approaching you. Hello there, you must be Axel and Nick. He greets the two of you with a firm handshake, one after another. As he smiles, you can't shake your mind from how familiar the man in front of you seems. Like you've met before, but you can't quite place it. 
a deep, pleasant voice. A quote comes to mind. Once upon a time in a dream. But then again, you're only human after all, and your mind says one thing when you look at him. Daddy, bear, woof. You shake your mind from the thought. Time to be professional. This might be one of your, or Nick's, new bosses. Yeah, thank you, I'm Nick. I'm Axel, and nice to meet you. He gives you another smile, telling you that despite the clothes he's wearing, you might not be expecting that much formality. Well, I'm Commander Mike Steele. I'd like to welcome you to Broadtown, even though I'm not a local. Well, maybe there's a certain level of formality involved after all. Nick gives you a look that says a thousand words. Military? The possibility to be there, but you've not expected it. Yeah, I've been here a few times before. It's a pleasant town. I'm more interested in hearing more about this job, if I'm to be honest with you, sir. Commander Steele raises an eyebrow as Nick says the final word of the sentence. I was actually hoping to have a small one-on-one -on -one interview with one of you tonight. If you're up for it, I'll ask a colleague of mine to hold the other interview at the same time. Nick looks at you. Seems to be interested in taking this chance. That sounds good to me. Oh, what about you, Nick? Well, you go with the commander then, Axel. Nick turns to the commander as he tries to stifle a small yawn. Well, I could use a few minutes though to have I meet your colleague, to be honest. Perfect. Let's get moving. The car is waiting. As he's talking, he motions you to follow and lead you towards... The limousine. Definitely high profile. You can't help but wonder if he'll be good enough for this job as this is how they introduce things. It'd be interesting to learn a little more about what kind of job this is. Pretty bluntly, things have been a little secretive. Well, they're quite the hype with the application process and all the secrecy. I'm glad we're finally going to get to know more about it. The commander lets out a little chuckle. <laughs> oh, a bit like signing up for a blind date on a dating website, I imagine. You can't help but blush at all of that comment. Stay focused. The commander turns to you. Oh, Axel, about our little interview. There's a coffee shop across the street from your hotel. How about you check in with the hotel and join me for some tea or coffee? And I'll tell you what I can for now. Maybe I'll shed some light on things for you. I like that. Oh, that's for you, Nick. I'll have to send a few messages. You and Nick wait as he sends and receives a few messages on his phone. All set. Well, my colleague Charles will be meeting you in the hotel lobby in about 30 minutes, Nick. As if on cue, the car stops outside a fancy hotel. I'll meet you then in a few minutes, then? Well, I'll wait inside for you. He gives you another warm smile as you exit the car. You check both you and Nick in with the number from the email Julia sent you. You didn't even need a credit card. She really did sort everything for us. Well, I'm kind of glad you're getting a small interview with the commander, so I can rest at all. Oh, I'm far too tired to make sense at the moment. I think I should get some sleep on the plane, then. No, to be honest, I'm not good with planes. Oh, sorry. No, your fault. I'll see you in the morning, Axel. Text me when and where we're meeting tomorrow, will you? I will. See you tomorrow, Nick. You bring your bags up to your room and fresh up a little in the bathroom before heading down to the coffee shop. The atmosphere is cosy and there are not a lot of people around. Looks like you'll be sitting at a secluded table with an amazing view. And the show knows how to pick his spots. He gives you a quick wave as you near the table he's picked. Well, I didn't know what you'd like, but I figured it's late, so I got you some hot chocolate. Well, let me know if you'd like something else instead, and I'll order it. That's perfect. Thank you, Commander. He looks slightly uncomfortable at your words, but quickly recovers. Well, you can call me Mike if you like. Technically, I'm not your superior. Well, not so formal, then. Thanks, Mike. He gives you a smile. So, about the interview. 
Let me stop and let you know that being somewhat dishonest. This is the actual interview. If you pass, tomorrow is more of an orientation. That's a surprise. But today's been full of surprises. Guess it's like ripping off a band-aid. Besides... I apologise for taking you by surprise like this, but I'd prefer to get more raw and polished answers. I'm just going to go straight in and let me know at any point if you'd like to stop. Some questions can get quite personal. Of course, you're welcome to ask me any questions as well. Even personal ones? Damn it, Axel. That isn't what this is about. You catch yourself spacing out for a second. The commander seems to be patiently waiting for you to process everything. When he notices that he has your attention again, he continues. Uh, first question. He's brought out a notepad and a pen. Would you tell me a little more about your experience in networking? Well, I worked on my current job for a few years now. Started out by working tech support for consumer-grade customers. Things went pretty fast, only took a few months for me to get promoted to my current department. I currently work with tech support for VIP customers and also coach my colleagues. When needed, I also work with network infrastructure and help extend our own network. Well, I talked to your boss, Julia. She praised you highly. I wouldn't sell yourself as short as you do. Oh no. What did Julia tell him? Well, next thing. I noticed there's a note on the application from your colleague, Nick. Oh, right. Nick did something to my application. Honestly, I'm not sure what he did. He wrote something and handed it over to Julia for I could see it. Oh, don't worry. It's not something bad. Let's just say you change your answer on the question about what certifications you have. The people around you all seem to think you sell yourself short, well, and they seem to think highly of you. Nick. The well, next part. Under well, family and relationships, you left the field blank. Does this mean you're on your own? There's no one special in my life at the moment. I can't help but feel like I'm intruding, but any family? I lost my mother to dementia last year. The rest of my family and I have not been on speaking terms since a few years back. Oh, I'm sorry. You can see genuine pain in his eyes as he looks towards you. I wasn't lying when he said the questions would get personal. Uh, and under sexuality. Here it comes. Well, I'm glad to let you know there's no prejudice among anyone in my crew. Crew? You probably let that slip. Well, that's good to know. The questions continue for about an hour and you both order another hot chocolate. It's mostly questions related to your past life. It feels somewhat like an extended personality test. Well, I think that settles it for my questions. I'll have you with you once again. Out of the questions on the personality test, only three candidates in total made the cut. You are one of them. I'm going to offer you the job. However, before you say yes or no, I'll also let you ask any questions you need. And you should be informed that after this point, anything you get to know includes total secrecy. As in, do not let anyone out on the outside know anything about the rest of our conversation, regardless of what happens. I don't mean to threaten you, but there would be legal action taken by various government agencies if you were to attempt to leak any information. Besides, I've been told what I'm about to tell you is hard to believe without seeing it first. And there's enough uncertainties in this world without us causing more chaos. Oh, with that said, do you have any questions for me before I tell you about the job? What did he just say? Did I get the job? What's that about three candidates? Does that mean Nick also made a big thesis here? Here goes nothing. I have a few questions. Let's start with the obvious one. Enough secrecy. What exactly is this job? How am I supposed to know if I'm qualified? The job itself is supposedly not that difficult. Well, we need someone familiar with different kinds of networking equipment. In essence, the main technical qualifications you'll need is being able to build and maintain a few servers and connect them to a new interface. 
As in, you need to be able to tell our engineers how the network you set up works with bits and bytes. That's not even as halfway as complicated as you'd imagined. This confirms his suspicions about new tech. That leads to the next question. Oh, that makes me wonder though, how come there's only three people who made the cut? Because what you described is, as you said, not that difficult. He shifts a little in his chair, as if pondering how to word the next part. Uh, it's about your personality and your personal profile. Everything from your family, where you're from geographically, all the way to your sexuality. That's... odd. But in a way, it makes sense. They basically only recruited from a pool of people they knew could handle the technical work. That... makes sense. He gives you a relief smile. Once again, it looks a little uncomfortable. The next few reasons are what might put you off from this. The next reason is that we need someone with your physiology to research immunity. Immunity? As you might have figured out from the long absence required for this, the entire process does not take place in this country. Well, not on this planet, in fact. Space travel? I'm not really a trained astronaut. Well, that's not a problem with our tech. Not at all. Space travel in a large vessel like the Firefly is not unlike your daily life here. There's artificial gravity, and you can adjust it for a personal preference. I feel like I'm doing a sales pitch here. He clearly wants you to accept the terms. I'll keep that in mind. I'll tell you a bit more about our mission, then. What do you know about quantum entanglement? You recall the one lecture you had on the subject when you were in school. You'd only passed on the subject briefly as the main point was philosophy. The idea had been that two objects can be entangled together, so that what happens to one affects the other. Not much. If I recall correctly, it's the idea that two objects can be entangled together. Whatever happens to one object affects the other. It looks a little surprised at your summary. Well, that's the gist of it. The idea is that you can entangle an object or space with another object or space. For example, if we entangle a room in the research facility here with a room in the building on another planet, then we place an assortment of molecules of similar amounts in both rooms. We can then change the contents of one room and mould them into what we need. Be it a list of information, a new process for a chemical reaction. Technically, we can even teleport things with only information of what it contains. If we, through quantum entanglement, can take the composition of an individual, for example, and set information to the entangled room, we could theoretically teleport someone. That's not the main core of this research, though. There are a few moral problems with that. You can think of more than a few. They wouldn't be the same person, would they? Well, that's a problem for the philosophers. But for the record, I think you're right. Which is why you're eliminated to sending data. You'll get to know more about it tomorrow and you'll get to meet some of my colleagues. This is where you come in. It's about hooking up network and equipment from this world to our equipment. This world? There's something I'm not being told here. This world? You caught that? Oh, good. Mike looks around. There's nobody else around. Everyone else has left by now. This is also part of why your psychological profile was important. It's expected that you can handle this. You blink. Once. Twice. Three times. You're certain it was hot chocolate you've been drinking. Maybe you confuse it for something with alcohol? In front of you is someone who looks like Commander Mike Steele. Only... It's a bear. A bear man, to be precise. You rub your eyes once more and take a step back to make sure what you saw is real.
Well, that's not a bad reaction. Your eyes are not fooling you. I'm not human. That's also where we're going, by the way. To my home world. You blink once more. And before he is once again the human version of the commander. Sorry to scare you like that. There's no real easy way to explain it without showing first. You're from another world, then? A space daddy bear, huh? That's... new. Anything else aside, I'll go along the idea without doubting too much for now. But... How did you change? Mike holds up his arm, showing you his watch. It works with the power of suggestion. It emits a suggestive sound and smell, even minuscule sonic waves. It suggests to you that I'm human, and therefore I look human. Although now it might stop working on you in just a bit. Technically it's used for stealth, Well, this works just as well. So he's not human. Things are adding up, strangely enough. Is that what the immunity research is about? He looks a little surprised. Oh, sharp. It is. We're going to another world. And do that safely, we need to research vax versions of vaccines for common diseases before we get there. Vaccines will work on humans. It's a vital part of our mission in order to be able to cooperate properly. So, what do you think? It's a lot to take in. You scratch your forehead, covering your eyes with your hand for a second. And just like he said it would, the device on his arm stopped working against you. Your eyes must have given it all away. He raises an eyebrow in realisation. And then his smile returns. You can answer tomorrow. Take your time, Axel. The bear hands you a business card. It has his name, title and phone number. If you ever need to call or text me. What about Nick? He's also here. Does that mean he also got the job? Well, yes, he should be having a separate interview with one of my colleagues right now. Somehow that's very comforting. You'll be able to discuss this with Nick later. You wonder if he's also talking to a bear. I think I have time to think things through. There is also... one final bit of information you should know when considering the offer. Mike looks sad. He raises one of his hands and loosens his ties if to get a little more air. What is it? The reason we're going to our world and the entire reason we're here in the first place. We're here to start working on a weapon together with the top researchers from Earth. A weapon? That does not sound good. It's to stop this world from ending. Like ours did. Your world ended? What? In a whimper. Mike speaks with sorrow in his voice. His voice is steady, but it's clear that what he's telling you about is not a pleasant memory. We don't know exactly where they came from yet, but one day, all of a sudden, our world was invaded. Beans did not try to communicate. But first, they just wandered our world, aimlessly. We attempted to communicate, but as we sent diplomats, they were... absorbed. Their very life was drained in seconds, and the creatures changed. They grew larger, faster and hungry. Everywhere they went they absorbed all kinds of life. Plants, animals, people, even the air changed. Of course we fought them and we still launch attacks when we can. But everywhere they go all that's left behind is a cloud of white ash. It singes the skin and burns your lungs. It rots the ground it touches. We call it 
the endless white. That is what we're fighting. Suddenly, Mike looks tired. Oh, I think that covers it. Do you have any other questions? I'll probably have some tomorrow, after I process everything properly. He gives you a nod. The look of exhaustion he just had on his face is almost gone. There'll be more thorough explanations then, as well. He stands up and gives you a once-over. I'll pick you up tomorrow, at about nine. I'll wait in the lobby. Axel, please consider the offer carefully. And have a good night. A good night, Mike. He gives you a smile as he leaves. Well, that took a turn. You're still processing the fact that he turned out to be... a bear. A space daddy bear. And there's the entire thing about being from another world. And space travel. You finish up your hot chocolate and retire to your hotel room. It's not take long to shower and clean up for the night. Maybe you should text the commands if he has my contact information as well. Screw it. I'll do it. Hi, Max. It's Axel. Maybe I should send you a message of my contact information as well. Oh, hi there. Thank you. That'll make things easier. Good night, Axel. Get some good rest. Good night. Well, that's done. Still, you're restless. That sure was a lot. It's risky and exciting. Ah, better off distracting myself for a bit so I can sleep properly. There'll be time to consider things properly tomorrow. You remember a game you played a few weeks back? Limits VN. A new version is out on itch.io. Perfect. This should help distract you. The characters sure are very handsome and have interesting personalities. Except that one time one of them put a screwdriver in a washing machine. Himbo. You boot up the game on your phone. The time has come, my child. It's time to take action. Seek him and save him. Father? Then everything shall be clear. What you do is up to you. Know your limits. Know thyself. Seek him and save him, and everything shall be clear. What if I could find that someone? That reminds you of the one lecture you had on quantum entanglement. It was a philosophy class, not a physics class. But the subject was interesting. It was Electro and Aristotle. Love is composed of a single soul inhabiting two bodies. Aristotle. What if two hearts or souls can be entangled? Would their feelings connect? Would you feel their pain and their sadness? Would you share their joy? Quantum entanglement, huh? Entangled souls would mean there's someone out there. That would be nice. And a little scary. The universe is apparently bigger than you thought, after all. That didn't distract you very well. Let's keep playing. I could use some quality time with the characters before I go to sleep. One of them really likes chocolate. That's pretty cute. I had the character in the game, I'd buy him a box of chocolates. You lose yourself in the game, and before you know it, you've finished the latest version. That helped you relax. And as Axel gets some rest of the night, I'm going to rest my voice. And we're going to end the episode here for now. I hope you are enjoying Distant Travels. As I have played it before. It's very good, and what I'm definitely looking forward to. And also, Limits was mentioned, and if you haven't played that one... I can also recommend it, especially Grand Brunner Screwdriver. 
the washing machine. I still don't know how he managed that. And to save anyone asking, it's a possible... I have to think of my schedule and see how things go and approach that dev as well. I always like to ask people before I do the, the ends. Just one of those things. But yeah, that's maybe something for the future later this year. We'll see how it all goes. And speaking of how things go, uh, Polar Knight has just today, as I record this, had an update for public release. So I will be thinking about doing that soon. We did it quite a while ago, but we have a new update and I want to continue with that one. I'll have to read it after I've finished editing this one. I haven't read it myself yet. Of course, we have more password coming up as well. Uh, Glory Hound's got a release. I have to do that one sometime when it comes up publicly. And because a lot of people ask me this, uh, far away on the world, hopefully public release the end of this month, March, or maybe in April, we'll see how things go with that. So that will be coming, and basically I'll do it when I can. I have no influence on how fast it comes out. But people do have an influence on this channel. Ah, my patrons! Some people donate to me on Ko-fi, and they are very much appreciated. That's a very strange segue, I think you'll agree. But uh, as always, I'd like to give a special thanks to my top patrons. They are Burnt Toast, Kartek, Gobas Vissa, Legacy Bucciarati, Lark Huskerton, Mastian, Brian Hall, Tiger Cub, Eda Corval, Anubis Silverwind, Dissonance, Grizz, Spiderling, Kopi, Cindy Dragonwolf, Marcus, Evan King, Exac, Aaron Fox, Mohamed Al Zamel, Andy Peng, Samuto, Omar, Big Booty Judy, and Nova Starburn. Many thanks to all of them and everyone who donates to keep the channel going ad free. And what else to say? Not much. I'll be back next weekend. I think this week is going to be too busy for me to slide in a weekday video. So next weekend we'll be back with whatever it is I wrote on my schedule and I've now forgotten. I literally updated it before I recorded this. So patrons, I will let you know afterwards when I share all this information with you so you'll know what's going on. Everyone else, ah, next week we'll find out. And that is it, as I say. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>